let's go through a quick little review of the properties of logarithms. Now, there's a couple, two things that are really, really important for us to understand before we get into the actual properties. The first, if you recall from my videos on graphing exponential and logarithmic functions, is that the logarithmic and exponential function are inverses of each other. Now, that's important to understand in terms of the graphs and the domain and the range, but it's also, again, very, very important to understand how we use and look at those equations. Here is a logarithmic equation. Again, students get this confused all the time. They always kind of forget what exactly a logarithm means, what we're trying to solve for. And the properties are helpful, but they're only really helpful if you understand how you can relate a logarithm to its exponential form. There, I even having trouble writing it down there. So you could always rewrite a logarithm in exponential form by keeping the same base raise it to the y equals the x. Now again, sometimes students make mistakes, they forget it, and they're like, how does this go again? So the best way I always like to think about this is again, go back to it another way. What about we write a exponential equation that we know is true, and therefore then we can rewrite it in logarithmic form so we can kind of remember exactly what it's telling us. So the one that I always like to go ahead and write is two raised to the third power equals eight, okay? Because I know, yeah, two raised to the third power equals eight. Now, how do I rewrite this in logarithmic form? Again, remember, you're gonna keep the base, so it's gonna be log base two. So my two is going to be my x, that is going to be my original value here, so it's gonna be of eight is equal to a three. So again, what we can think about this of the logarithm is basically saying two raised to what number is going to equal eight? Well, two raised to the third power equals eight, right? Which we explained in our exponential form. The other thing that I think is really important for us to remember, especially for our rules, or even when we're trying to do properties, which again, transcends into solving as well as condensing and expanding. But just remember, you know, you have your log, you have your base, and as well as you have your argument. Well, if I just have a log base 10 of x, we write that as log of x. If I have a log base e of x, we just rewrite that as an ln of x. Okay, so I will do the rules. I will mainly focus on the logarithms and then I'll just do a quick review of everything when we're dealing with the properties with ln. Okay, so these are gonna be our four basic rules of logarithms that I think every student gonna need to make sure you know. So if you have not written them down, please make sure you write them down. Please make sure you review them multiple times before you take a test or a quiz or even a final exam. So b, uh, log base b of one is going to equal a zero. And I think the easiest way for us to be able to understand that is again, just go and take a look at this. Well, if I rewrite this in exponential form, if I go b to the zero, equals one, right? And again, yeah, anything raised to the zero power is always going to equal a one. So the next one is again, we can understand this rather easy as well. That's gonna equal one, because if I look about this in exponential form, b to the first power has to equal b, right? And you can, again, you can see, yeah, b raised to the first power is just gonna equal b. That makes sense. Now, for the next example, this one kind of gets a little bit more confusing. So what I'm gonna do in this case is say, you know what, I don't know what this answer is. So let's use a question mark. Now, technically in mathematics, we like to use a variable, right? But I already have B and X's and you know what? I noticed my daughter in second grade, she does math problems with question marks. They're introducing them to algebra concepts. And I was like, well, we can start with this. We don't know what this answer is. So let's take the question mark, which is just representing using as a variable. And let's again, rewrite this in our exponential form. Now, if you remember in the previous video where I, I looked into this for exponential, graphing exponential functions, this is something that comes in very, very important. If I have b raised to some power equals b raised to some power, the only thing that makes sense is that x has to equal that other variable. And the easiest way I like to you know, kind of think about this is if I had a, let's say a three squared equals three to the x, what does x have to be? x, it only makes sense for x to equal two. This is actually what we call the one-to-one -one property. Now, I didn't originally write this in there because I wanted to introduce it to you guys, but it is something that's very important. If you have b to the y equals b to the x, then you know y has to equal x, okay? So we're actually adding on an extra property. You're welcome. Now, the next one, this gets to a lot of students as well because this one looks just as confusing. So it says b raised to the log base b of x is equal to what? Well, again, let's use the question mark. Okay, now notice this is an exponential form. You have a base raised to a power equals some variable. 
So I don't want to rewrite this in exponential form. It's already in exponential form. I need to go from exponential form back to logarithmic form. So now it's going to look something like this. Now, this looks something very similar to what we had over here. This is what we call that one-to-one -one property. If you have the same bases, are exactly the same, raised to different powers, their powers have to equal each other. Well, guess what? The one-to-one -one property for exponents is also true for logarithms. If you have two logarithms with the same base, their arguments have to be the same. So again, this answer, sorry, let me add this in there, is going to be x. And this answer in here is going to be x. So question mark has to equal x. And again, that goes into our understanding of exactly what we had here. So if I had log base b of y equals log base b of x, then we could say y is going to equal our x, okay? So those are your five main properties. I gave you the three, we worked on them. These are your last two that a lot of students will get confused. So make sure you review these a couple extra times. These are going to be very important coming up when we deal with solving exponential and logarithmic equations. So we definitely want to go back and remember these. And then also remember guys, the base does not matter. It doesn't matter if it's base 10 or base five or base B or even base E. So just a quick little review though, I will show them in natural logarithmic form. So therefore you can just remember, oh, it's the exact same things. It's just now with natural logarithms instead of logarithms. Okay, so now we got the properties. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to do a quick little review of evaluating our logarithmic expressions.